Ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran, and today we are going to be taking a look at the latest Soviet Womble drop. He's back with Random Arma BS Part 10, Diaz, and we are going to ask ourselves if after years, maybe almost a decade of doing this, Soviets learned anything. Let's get into it. Oh, uh, what? What is this? Why am I in jail? So this is the... No, he is not. He has learned nothing. And frankly, becoming a POW is actually the comp the situation around being a POW is complicated because it's governed by the Geneva Convention and the law of war. POWs are, are required to first off, there's some requirements you have to meet while you you are permitted to treat your soldiers before you treat any POWs. POWs have to have access to the same medical care as regular troops you can't for example send them to you know uh, g g put them in you know medic training courses or have them see student doctors when your main forces are seeing legitimate medical professionals second they have to be fed the same rations as your frontline troops third you have to ensure that they are housed in a way that is basically safe, right? There's a bunch of negatives as well. For example, you cannot use POWs to perform labor as like a, a, a labor battalion. You cannot use them as combat troops, right? You can't force them to fight against their comrades and you cannot put them on the front lines or hold them in places where they are in imminent danger. So actually it's a huge a huge logistical nightmare to have POWs in your area because it's a lot of resources to deal with them properly. Yeah, the, uh, armor DLC. Wow. Welcome to the armor three expansion. Also, you should search your POWs so that they don't end up in jail with weapons. In fact, so nice. Yeah. We're stuck in prison now. I've got my harmonica. <laughs> I dream of seeing the outside again, but I'm institutionalized now, Sarnide. Hey, you know how prisons work, right? No, I'm not the bitch in this prison. You're the bitch in this prison. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're also not allowed to, you know, torture your prisoners. I guess that goes without saying, but... You're the bitch in this prison. Okay, let me just turn off the fucking harmonica. God, we thought harmonicas would be a good idea in prison. That's incredibly irritating. You somehow managed to hit me with a big blast, apparently. Well, I did warn you. Oh. Whoa, Jesus Christ, on a stick. Are you all right? No, fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, yeah, holy I'm shit, happy. he's dead. I'm I'm a, dead. You're not dead? Well, you were mortally wounded. In yeah, okay, so this is actually a really good illustration of a properly done ambush where you find troops that are exposed, right? This line of troops have exposed themselves along this uh, parapet here, and then they start taking fire unexpectedly. The secret now is before, the, and just like real combat, you can't get distance and direction that easily. It's really hard to know exactly where the rounds came from and where you need to return fire to, especially if there's civilians in the area, right? Right? because you can't just make your best guess people live in these houses so this is sort of the conflict and one of the things that's so frustrating about counterinsurgencies is that oftentimes if they're fighting like a proper insurgency they're going to shoot and then they'll just withdraw vanish into the city in, in the fight Beric. no i'm not uh, he's mortally wounded in the fight Beric. You, you'll be remembered Beric. your sacrifice will not be in oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck, yes. oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's just nine millimeter you pussy walk it off Just doing his chest to try and fucking stop the bleeding. How many medics does it take? Requesting medic at here, Rish. Yeah, I heard you the first time. Get his head, Bonzi, if you can. I'm doing his chest. Yeah. Do just do. I am. Okay, so what's interesting is they're like, hey, why does it take so many medics? Well, the answer is if you're really uh, badly wounded, you do need multiple medics. Uh, one, to manage airway, possibly to uh, do support breathing. Um, someone else to establish tourniquets, right? There's also just simply the non-medical uh, work, right? You have to... Um, you know, remove it. Normally, you would, once you're treating somebody, you would remove their body armor. You would even potentially cut away parts of their uniform in order to ensure that you can properly assess the casualty, right? Uh, but you also just need to move the casualty. And that itself is quite a bit of work. And, you know, if you have a medic who's treating them, plus someone needs to move, drag, or relocate the casualty, uh, it can be, it can take three or four people. That's why in the U.S. military, uh, we actually are trained that a squad, a nine-man infantry squad, is no longer combat effective when taking just 
two casualties because of course the nine becomes seven but then each one of those casualties has to have at least one person uh treating them potentially two so now you're down your seven you're actually down four people that's almost 50 percent of your combat power is out the door so with just five remaining uh shooters right you basically have the capacity to protect yourself but you cannot maneuver on the enemy and once you can't maneuver on the enemy you're not really effective as a fighting force as a fighting unit so your orders just sort of default to what well, you, you'll call up the headquarters and you'll request withdrawal and you'll explain that you're no longer combat effective but it's incredible that really two serious casualties is all it takes what I can tell through my powers of medical deduction that he has a hole in his foot. I have medical training. He doesn't have any before you are. I'm pretty sure he will by the end of this session. Are we sure this isn't drug oh seeking behavior? Oh wait, he's from Birmingham. Has anyone got any heroin? Have some heroin. There we go. Oh, can't wait. Wakey, wakey. Wake wake See, told you. Good back. Oh, Welcome back. Oh, well, shock that worked. Though, really, okay, fun fact, guys, if someone has lost a lot of blood you and is in respiratory distress, you don't want to give them an opiate. Um, it's one of the reasons that uh, ketamine is a sometimes popular... Uh, it's it's the legitimate medical use of ketamine is when someone when you need to kill someone's pain but you cannot have their respiration rate drop you want to give them something else so yeah if you lose a lot of blood and and you're in danger that sort of thing then um yeah an opiate opioid heroin morphine etc probably isn't the best call dr womble saves today again with heroin but remember, me unlike in video games, medical treatment in the field is meant to do one thing, and that's to keep you alive long enough to get you to an actual medical facility where they can use their tools to diagnose you properly, treat you, and stabilize and save your life. Blonde locks flowing in the wind as I fly past in my F-16. That's got to be breaching some sort of Air Force yeah, grooming rules. Uh, do it like the movies, right? yeah. Nope, you can have a... I don't, I don't actually know when it comes to pilots. I think... I think... Uh, it seems like a ponytail would be more obtrusive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Switch your hair. Switch your hair. I mean, let me know in the comments if you guys know what the deal is for air, uh, female pilots' hair with the helmet on. Like, what is the protocol? Because you're worth it. Because I'm worth because it. Because you're worth uh, it. Wait, has my wig come off? Okay. It's a wig. <laughs> it's a wig. <laughs> right, so why is it on the floor in the dirt? Am I okay? Can I move, Doc? Ouch. Nope. Yeah. I'm all done. Thank you. How's the view? So I had better ones? Right, right. My heart is beating <laughs> super fast. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to compliment you. I need epinephrine. I'm pecking you. Thank you. <laughs> Who's taking point on this one? Who's that? Is that a snake? Okay, apparently there's a snake that wants to also hear the briefing. Cool. Is everyone yeah. here? Uh, yeah, I think we're all here. Hug. No, mm. hug. What? Hugs. Hug. Okay, this guy has some serious uniform going on. First off, he's got his Soviet-style tanker helmet, which is, if you've ever used it, it's not really a helmet. It's soft cotton that's meant to sort of protect your head from gentle jostles, but it's not going to stop... It protect you in any way from shrapnel or anything like that uh second he's got the russian airborne striped undershirt right so that's a nice touch but i'm curious why he's mixing and matching so many weird uh uniforms from apparently hug. different you eras you trying to suck my cock that, that you. that's how my dad used to hug me so there's you three squads plus fucking they're okay. still on team speak i love it hang on a minute tom would you kindly f fuck off? <laughs> if you open your mouth, you see Informant Clarkson. Is his first name Jeremy? You're going to move up to Informant Clarkson, recover him from the Taliban, and do whatever he tells you. Oh god. If it's like real Jeremy Clarkson, he's just going to tell you to build a, build a, a car out of something. Shouts in Arabic, northeast of me, other side of this wall. Alright, I need two people to go and clear that building out and get yourself ready to breach that compound. Here, here's the entrance. Watch out for grenades. Somebody's throwing grenades at us. Wait, you mean that angry person that I'm hearing? Hello? That angry person. Hello? What's hello in Arabic? Chat, what's hello in Arabic? Does it say something right? Salam alaikum. It's, it's salam alaikum.
racist. For the love of God, don't say something racist. Um, Shalom. <laughs> We're the uh, forces of the United States. Ignore the British accent. Do you have Jeremy Clarkson in there? <laughs> yeah, that's a yes. Okay, I'm going in. All right, we're going in. He's on the right. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson's having a bad day. <laughs> Babbling inside that compound with an AK. Oh, God. Okay, if you guys don't know, this is a reference to Top Gear. Uh, Top Gear is a British car show featuring Jeremy Clarkson... Mark Hammond and James May. And they uh they just have to do goofy shit with cars. They modify cars, they review cars, they make fun of cars. That's just their jam. So the uh they're you know motivated. Uh they basically they did it for like a decade. They were super popular, and then they sort of uh did some controversial things. They got drunk and said some stuff. And anyway, they got canceled by the BBC. And then immediately Amazon signed them uh for like millions of dollars to make basically the same show for Amazon. And it was actually pretty good. It was actually pretty good. Um but that was years ago. I don't even know what they're doing now. I think James May has like a food channel or something. Well, the Ford is a car. It's still here. It's alive. A wheel is round. Uh, oh, Jeremy Clarkson, you're a cunt. You've, You've got, got a tiny one. penis. <laughs> Are you <laughs> not the ragtag retard you've been sent to rescue me? Uh, yeah, we're, um, is it Netflix? What's he doing that that show on these days? Amazon. Amazon, sorry. Yeah, we're Amazon here to pick you What's up. better than the BBC? Rescue, yeah, d rescue you from the BBC. I see you've Make already sure punched you out somebody. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. We're not, we're not having NPCs advertise Amazon Prime. <laughs> this is so Listen, if, if, if you're going to have, it's one, Soviets should be doing integrations like this. This video brought to you by Amazon Prime. Um, he may actually be too controversial for sponsors, but I'm fascinated because literally the sponsors probably offer him as someone who routinely gets like millions of views. He's probably getting like six figure offers for sponsorship deals. Uh, literally, if he took like three sponsors, he could basically not have to work again if he tightens his belt um or or alternately can buy a studio uh, apartment in london studio uh flat if it's a squad leader i've secured oh, here he is he's coming do you have a do you, do you have a gag or something Take me home. contact minaret in the mosque fendi's already inside the mosque Go Yeah. What? What friendly. the hell just happened to? Wow. Okay. Fun fact, guys. It, 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 U.S. ROE uh, for basically the entirety of the war was: do not enter a mosque, do not shoot at a mosque. Not if their enemy is inside it. Not if they are in. If you are in imminent danger, you could. I could literally watch the Taliban run into a mosque with weapons. And they would be like, don't search it. That was the rule, man. That was the rules of engagement. It doesn't make sense to me either. But people, you know, they really cared about Afghan public opinion. Um, and the Afghans would be upset if you, you know, ran, did anything to a mosque. Yeah. Well, one question for you. Well, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but if the Taliban turn it into a combat site, then what do they expect to happen? Different rules, different rules. Did you shoot at a guy in the tower? Oh, he's, he's no, that's someone else. Oh, no. Sorry, no, <laughs> you bitch. You see, folks, here we have an interesting moment. A few years ago, I would have simply shot him. But you see, I've been doing this YouTube thing for quite some time. You know, I'm, I'm not the same guy that I was in my 20s. I'm halfway through my 30s. I feel that, you know, I've matured. I can look at this man and I know that I have a choice. I can choose to be the better man. I can choose not to be an asshole. I mean, I can choose. Sure, <laughs> I hope he has the good sense to shoot him in the leg because, you know, why not torture somebody? Blasted. Thinks he can oh, walk up to me <laughs> and shoot me with his puny little gun. What are you supposed to be, Spike? Sorry. Medic. Are you... That's good. Thank you. Very fantastic. Whoa, this is highly realistic. Uh, they're called PCCs and PCIs, pre-combat checks and pre-combat inspections. Pre-combat checks are checks of, um, like, procedures, right? So, like, things you should know. Uh, you might check your 
uh, radio freaks and make sure your squad knows which freaks are reaching to what. Uh, you might check that they know the infill routes or the egress routes. Um, a pre-combat inspection is going to be checking equipment. That's, for example, checking your eye protection. Uh, this sounds insane, but it's true. Checking to make sure your soldiers haven't taken out their side plates. I had to fire a squad leader because he inexplicably decided to take out his side plates and hide them under his bed i'm not making this up and then he acted like well it was medically necessary i'm like if it was medically necessary you would go to a medic or a doctor who would the battalion surgeon who would sign off on this man doesn't have to carry his side plates but he didn't he hid them under his bed because he didn't want to walk people man you're a cunt, <laughs> I mean, I would also check, like, Mission Essential gear. Like, I would check our um, VS-17 panels, make sure we had uh, the ability to, like, signal to medevac helicopters. Um, I would check, um, like, weapon mixes and, and gear tie-downs. Just, you, you, the, gear, the goal is not to check everything. You check a couple of random things, and it's like if you if every soldier knows that every possible piece of gear could be checked, then they're going to try to do everything right. Is the intent, anyway, with good PCIs. That sounds rough. If we need it, I'll let you know. Copy that, sir. Pretty simple, basic shit. All right. Four. Radios for important chatter only. If I hear any bullshit like what you ate for dinner, I'm just gonna again shoot. Ah, uh, chicken with cheese sauce and can't open poo poo. Nice, some job of the hut. Star Wars references. I like it. Oh, that's several. Holy shit. Get behind the car. Get behind the car. Okay, they're British. Realizing narrator. No. Set up high top right square graph. No, no, no. Squad, Shut up. ATA, Exit narrator oh, window. Contains yes. Shut button. the fuck up. Jesus no button. Are you sure you want to exit now? Alright, this is the weirdest headgear I've ever seen. So you have a British Royal Marine. Then you have a Soviet. Shut the fuck up. You can up. even see right. the star on it. A Soviet Initializing officer. No, don't <laughs> Double tap your mama. Oh god. Fuck and wait, where's the Alton helmet? Oh, we missed it. There was also an Alton helm there. Conscious, the fucker woke up and killed me. Oh no! Shit. Yeah, that's what you double tap. Double tapped your mom last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fair. That was a triple trap tap. <laughs> Maybe even a quadruple tap, but it sounds like he had it coming. Oh no, the uh, the town we're in now is called Sophia. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay, Sophia's actually in. Bulgaria or Croatia? I'm curious if that's just a they just randomly stuck uh, names on there. Hmm? What? Oh no, that looks oh, like hello. looks like it could be hello. Sophia Bulgaria. Hello. No, no, I'm gonna do things to his bum. Uh, you got it, you got it, you got it. Uh, you got morphine. Hello. I got morphine. Hang on, there we go. Uh, yeah, just pump him full of morphine. Just help him calm down. Oh god. Oh shit, I think I got one more. I want to save okay. that for me. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, guys, here's the thing. If you are a one of the things, so when addicts OD, one of the most dangerous times to be someone who has addiction issues is when they are addicted, obviously, to something pretty toxic, um, but when they go through a long period of sobriety, because the problem is their body's tolerance will reset. Imagine if you went a year without drinking, right? Imagine you're someone who can put down 10 beers in a day, right? Well, you go a year without drinking. And those 10 beers in a day may actually, like, kill you. Maybe not in a day, but, like, in an evening, right? Like, if I was to drink 10 beers, you know, I would be just, like, crushed, right? I would be non-functional the next day. Uh, in contrast, uh, some of you viewers, statistically, about, I think it's, like, 10% of Americans, could knock back 10 beers, uh, and that's a typical day for them. So the same way, it works the same way with morphine. So giving morphine, a, a, an amount of morphine that an addict or heroin that an addict could comfortably use and that often addicts were using before their period of sobriety, trying to take the same a normal dose leads to an overdose because their bodies have reset their tolerance. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, he overdosed. He overdosed. He's a junkie. He had an overdose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you, uh, have you got enough scopes there, Si? I have a micro penis and I need to just make myself feel better about it, okay? Yeah, yeah. I've lined the bunker's size on the map. 
And they're moving into the bunker now. Yeah. Can you move out of the bunker? <laughs> yeah, take a picture, take a picture. Take yeah, a yeah, picture. yeah, yeah. Get, get one of me and Soviet, get one of me and Soviet. Okay, okay. Bit, bit, further, bit further back, point. Waffle, bit further okay. back. Bit further back, Waffle. Bit further back, Waffle. Bit further back. Turn around and run a bit more, a bit more. Right, go, 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 come on. <laughs> <laughs> go. You cock! <laughs> 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 Alright, interesting. So they've just decided to... to... Alright, I'll tell you. While I would not tolerate that level of fucking around on patrol... And... It, it, you did, you did, there's a lot of fucking around that happens. Exactly like that. In general, in the store. Uh, yeah, I have all the grenades for us. Oh, yeah, small people. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back, what a cunt. Ah. Hey, Georgie! Hi, how's it going? Yeah, I'm good, how you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. I'm excited. Yeah, should be fun. Hey, Tom. Good talk. Hey, Bumble. Yes? You smell. That's rude, that is. Mm, I wonder what military this is. Is this Soviet? It looks that sort of looks like a Soviet helm. Hi, Cake. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm ready to shoot some Germans. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's you. That looks American. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, Mag. Fucking shove a bandage up your ass with it. God's sake. Hold on. Let me get it done. No, I'm changing position. What? The what is this? Number is itchy bottom. What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Guys, you have no idea how close he is to the real military. Like, in terms of the ratio of mission focus to screwing around. Like, basically, if you're not on mission, you're absolutely screwing around. Oh, the the Take off your uniform, drop on the ground and look at it. No, please. Drop the uniform and look at it. Hang on. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, oh my god! <laughs> what? Dinkle. Your water. uniform has hands! That's your <laughs> uniform? <laughs> what the fuck? You <laughs> can't take your skin off in the <laughs> trenches. <laughs> Leave <laughs> this to <laughs> Skinwalkers. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Creepy. Pretty still have a Mac and there, sir. Hey, POW. POW? Oh, wow, you got one of. Okay, guys, I'm just gonna point this out. I think this is a real gun design if, if Zach's gun rants are to be believed. But this weapon here is actually. It's just ridiculous. Look, you have to look through a magazine to 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 see anything. Like, what are you even aiming at? B W. Oh wow, you got one of them. Hey. Ah, see, he's doing the right thing, right? He's trying to get him to the rear. He's trying to get him away from the combat zone. That's essential to treating POWs properly. Taken prisoner. Oh no, knock it off. Oh, he's taking the piss. <laughs> Okay, so torture, right? And it doesn't have to be physical torture. It can be torture like playing aggravating, worthless music. Um, you know, that to a German could be torture. Uh, similarly, for example, in uh, the um, Abu Ghraib, one of the tortures they would do to the prisoners was actually to disrespect the Quran in front of them. And while it, as an American, we don't have, even if it was a Bible, right, tearing up a Bible or lighting a Bible on fire, it, it's just, you just kind of roll your heads, right? But it's a sacred object in their culture. So even if to an American, an American, uh, even if to a Christian or a Jew, it wouldn't be regarded as torture to, um, you know, desecrate uh, the 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 sacred text of the religion. Um, it doing it to a Muslim is considered a form of torture. So even though the Scot may consider himself giving this German a a rousing, co motivating concert, to the German he is being tortured. No man deserves this. <laughs> Okay, Hi, but, Harry. Hi, Harry. Hello? He's like a lost building. puppy. That's probably how the, I imagine the real Prince Harry was in the British Army. Hi, Harry. You look really cute today, baby. Oh, Hi, Harry. Oh, thanks, it's very sweet of you to say. Hi, Hi so How is your war? I've been surviving. My KD is 2.0. KD? Um, okay, have, have a great war. You too. You too. Have a great war. Hi, Harry. One day. <laughs> Just calling out for the word squad. <laughs> God bless that man. I don't think I've ever known someone so pure. <laughs> Have a great war. Oh, we still got the bloody bagpipe. So you know what? You gotta say, if you were lost, Harry, you could just follow the sound of the bagpipes. Really? Right now? Oh, 
please Leave help. Go on, I'll take it. I'm being Move a again. She's by now. <laughs> Put me down! <laughs> Happy shagging! That's true love. <laughs> oh, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, man. It's not man napping, it's still kidnapping, even if it's an adult. Hey! They're scared of the fucking bagpipes! Your objectives will be threefold. Make contact with the Norwegian resistance, assault the plant, and destroy the heavy water production facilities, and then escape to your east across the Swedish border. Okay, you will find your phrase book right now. So I've written it out oh, in yeah. British English syllables. Ooh. Do I get to <laughs> Oh god, this this can only be terrible. But if you've ever seen, there's actually real booklets like this. Uh, how to distinguish uh, Japanese from Chinese, like a bunch of cultural touchstones and some kind of racist ones. Uh, there's also a Know Your British Culture on how uh, Americans can be good guests in Britain. Uh, there's all sorts of interesting old documents from that era. To mangle some Norwegian, let's have a look. Yeah, can I go to mm -hmm. Kagan and ask how to pronounce whip it good in Norwegian? <laughs> uh, I usually. Fusfordar. <laughs> yeah, alright, Quebec. Uh. <laughs> you okay, you Quebec? Flu. Uh, oh man, no oh, shit. Kissing the bubbles. The only Norwegian you need to know is Kanap. Kanap? What does Kanap mean? It means button. Ah, okay, of course. Tusen tak. Quebec. Bless you. Now, uh, Neztu, piss, pray, k, o, re, ut, ye, valsa. Yeah, you got it! <laughs> oh, man. You got it! Yeah, I was gonna say, none of these appear to be, like, Deutsch or, or Don, Deutsch or German. Like, the word doesn't appear there. Ah, little troll and... Yeah, <laughs> See, we speak in Norwegian. <laughs> you okay, Quebec? I love how Quebec is sick, but he's also playing as though his character feels like crap as well. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's not feeling good. So listen to me, listen up, folks. We need to do some practice. So, uh, Satan is Satan. Saturn. Hell is Helvata. Helvata. Fuck is Faan. Faan. I love these like irrelevant phrases. I mean, this is like when you're in Spanish class in eighth grade and they're just like, like, K S L Tiempo. And it's like, bro, this is the cell phone era. We all know what time it is all of the time, right? Though Donde Esta El Baño is frankly always relevant. Um, you sack of shit is Dean Drift. DG. <laughs> it all sounds German to me. Yeah. If they start speaking this language at me, I'm going to shoot it. There's Nazis out there, man. Yeah, Kate doesn't get it. Like, we're British. We just point at things and speak English louder. Yeah. Pocket er means damn it. Yes means G. Very important one. Has to cook. Which means? Horse <laughs> cock. These are, these are, this is the important pre-training. <laughs> Why are we yelling horse cock at the Norwegian Hestcook. resistance? You know, like how they gave the Americans the books on how to behave in Britain, 1944 and all that? <laughs> did guess. they? What did they what say? Mmm, yeah, yeah, I actually haven't, I don't know the actual content. You know, say nice things in pubs, don't act too chummy with all the Brits, because we're, you know, we're all very reserved and that sort of thing. But ours right. is just did it yell work? horse cock at the natives. <laughs> <laughs> I love how this is Soviet. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a strange blasted wasteland, this place. It is Norway. Blasted wasteland. Look, Norwegian resistance. Okay, I love how they all have bikes in the in the deep snow, in like, you know, shin deep, deep snow, they're riding bikes. That's the most Norwegian shit I've ever heard. <laughs> First thing they do is steal their bicycles. <laughs> Harry, some weird yes. looking Nazis. Oh shit, you're not Harry. I am. You're different. Oh, that's weird. You're Harry, but you're not Harry. Oh, what the fuck? I just ran up to who I thought were like my parents in a shopping mall, and it was someone just completely random. Yeah, guys, listen. Uh, operating at night without night vision. 
is so hard. Dude, that happens all the time. It is incredibly challenging. That's why for most of history, just battles just didn't happen at night. Sometimes if you were really aggressive, you would try to maneuver your forces or reposition them at night, but it would be so hard to do at scale. It's so hard. Um, so yeah, that sort of thing happened all the time. Not Weijin, Norwegian. Oh wow! Nice. Norwegians help like invaded if they can do this. Yeah. Okay. That rock Jesus sounds like Christ. cake. Yeah. It's me. I'm a ghost. Hello. Oh shit! That's don't do that cake. That's really fucking weird. Oh. Are you are you sure? Yeah, it's weird. It's... Wait, ah, you no, no. <laughs> She's like my left ear. And my... All right, so now they're in the haunted Norwegian forest. This can only get worse for them. Right ear is weird. I don't like it. Guys, eh? Quebec's going back to the medical tent. Can you come grab all his brain, man? All right, yeah, yeah. Is he feeling feeling ill? Yeah. You go I'm rest, man. Go rest. You, you did your best. Yeah, I'm... I have extra more. Guys, I hope you feel better soon, dude. Yeah, yeah. Feel better soon, Quebec. Yeah. Yeah, you too. <laughs> oh god that's how it feels to be sick sometimes when you're in the field you're just like i would love to die right now oh no gratis oh my god love it that's very american to be like there's only two languages american and spanish is that the word for looting I mean, I would be curious to know, like, because, you know, w when I was a kid, the stereotype was Americans speak zero languages. You know, they speak bad English and Europeans speak 50. And, you know, I, I was just in Europe and, and it's sort of true. The fact that it feels like every European speaks at least three languages. Um, but I got to say, as an American, I think the number of Americans that speak English and Spanish is like actually really, really high now. Um, I think it's maybe not at European levels, but the number of Americans with at least a conversant grasp of Spanish, I think, is extremely high. All right, um, take good positions. We're expecting a counterattack here. Try to shoot the civvies out of here as well. Ah, who shot them? Shoot the civvies, not shoot the civvies. Shoot them. Yeah, okay, so shooing, uh, if you're a civilian and you hear gunfire in your town, you know, and you're, there's a war going on, you should leave. You should leave in the direction away from the gunfire. That is just a survival tip from your boy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look at that World War II weapon. Tom is down. Can somebody find him? Uh, I'm pretty sure I just shot Tom. <laughs> right, front You're right. taking the front forward on the right side. I'll pick you up from there. Stand by yeah, it's like a Ukrainian squad right there. Just like all anti-tank weapons. Every person. One, one, don't move your boat off. Don't move your boat off. Stand by. Got you. Oh God. You're so good. Whoa, They're gonna this. die. Whoa. This is so reckless. This is gonna go bad. Oh, we're gonna die. Because of, uh, oh, oh, look at this. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Today's episode of Broken Physics. Was this your idea? Let's fall back. I don't even know if those boats have um, seatbelts. I've never heard actually of a boat with a seatbelt. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, you got him? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? It goes over you okay? I'm okay. It's not, it's not showing anything. You might not be able to oh! it. Ooh. Yeah, that's how an IED actually goes. You're walking along, you think things are fine, and then immediately they're not fine. And that's that's also what a good ambush should feel like. Again, things are chill, and then they're suddenly very not chill. I'm not okay! What's he shooting at? Wave, wave. Good range of movement right now. Right. Alright, uh, Aizen, we're gonna garrison this. Yeah. Oh god, is it even a Soviet game if there's not uh, techno no, no, music no, no, dropping no, 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 all of a sudden? 
Oh no, I need to like. Okay, good. They've got someone on the door west. I'm gonna throw some smoke to try and cover us if we can. Copy that. You throw smoke on me. I said smoke. Oh, they are. Well, they can't see you. I can't get sir. Jesus. I can't work like this. This pumps up. Guys, that's is, actually throwing smoke on your own position is is not the worst idea. If you know where the enemy is, yes, put smoke between you and the enemy to cover your withdrawal. But if you don't, you can just make it harder to aim at you by just dropping smoke where you are. But you probably need to have an exit plan. Something tinkle. Ah. Just pump something and hope it's the heart. I don't need surgery with a happy ending. Right <laughs> Platoon leader, this is Warrior. We have contact with possible enemy unit wearing a gas mask. He came in with a white flag, by the way, over. I, I want you to know. So, okay, here's the thing with the law of war. A surrendering enemy you cannot shoot. Now, the rules of what constitutes a surrendering enemy are pretty specific, right? You, you, you have, they have to have, like, put down their weapon. They have to be, like, waving a white flag. Um, there's actually some rumors that when in the initial Russian invasion, many of the Russian troops simply took off their uniforms and walked away, just walked into Ukraine. Um, that would be an example of an enemy who's clearly no longer a threat. Right, a Russian man, yeah. a Russian man claiming to be an officer walked up the road in a full NBC suit and the man of first contact to talk to this uh, Russian soldier who was demanding terms of surrender was Harry. <laughs> and he went, hey, what's up? <laughs> now I'm going to spawn something for myself. Do not get in it. Huh? What have you done? <laughs> oh, okay. What on earth <laughs> is that? Okay, that is not what I was expecting from a, a, a realistic milsim. Right, okay. <laughs> That's okay then. This is great. Uh, okay, I'd say this is probably looks like maybe right. an awesome. Right. Or a sun spider, maybe? Yes, I've just noticed. Yes. Uh, you will have a 10 minute w window where the radar has been hacked. During those 10 minutes, you need to take it down. If not, Reinforcements will uh, be called for. Known weapon stealer in the uh, town of Ramadi with his own PMC. It's to basically clear the, the entire fucking island, but the radar tower on your go. Call on it, so that Shout out to the one person who just randomly dies and it's not even like a newsworthy event. Gives you a 10 minute wi window. So you have 10 minutes to take that one. Oh god. Oh man, I'm definitely. Also, this will probably get copyrighted. I'm just gonna take it Damn! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it has jets, it has jump jets. I love it. Wheelies. <laughs> <laughs> this is just hilarious, actually. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> that thing's awesome. Uh, I told you, it was an awesome. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. As always, please hit subscribe. Please, please, please. We are almost at 100k. Um... I really want that silver plaque on my wall. It would mean the world to me if you guys did it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.